Hi, I thought we'd do a quick teardown of a DC solar isolator switch. This one actually comes from my uh, old installation here. It's a Benedict Jobby, an LS25 PFLH4 for those playing along at home. You can see here it's a four pole single throw um, and it's got different current ratings for different uh, voltages. So it's designed to safely switch off uh, high voltage DC solar arrays uh, like under load, like at many amps. So um, yeah, up to 1500 volts at uh, 4 amps here depending on the uh, switch configuration because uh, this is a 4 pole single throw but you can actually wire this in different uh, configurations here so this is just the uh, switch unit itself but it does actually come in different like enclosure and knob variants and all sorts of things and uh, different wiring arrangements and all sorts of stuff so the uh, link in the data sheet down below is uh, very comprehensive in terms of like how you can configure this mine was in like a uh, neat, like a waterproof weatherproof uh, NEMA uh, case designed for outdoor use. So we've got four screw terminals in here uh, and four out here but you can see that this one actually uh, contains uh, little shorting uh, links on here so they're actually uh, put in two of them in series so it's basically a uh, two pole uh, single throw switch but the reason that you put them in series is because then you double your uh, working voltage essentially because you put in two switches in series you're not increasing your current capability that remains the same but now you've got two switches in series that are breaking so you've got higher uh, voltage arcing uh, capability and this hole on top is where the uh, shaft from the big knob goes in that's what she said and you can see it's a multi-layered approach here so it's no coincidence that we've got four uh, switches and there's four of these um, so I assume that they're going to have like an entire level devoted to each one of these switches and you can see that in terms of like the different height arrangements here and how these are physically staggered like that so you can see that one lines up with there that lines up with there like that and so on so uh, yeah that's how they get the larger voltage isolation in there now there's actually no a rating in the data sheet for like how many cycles full cycles this thing can actually do um, a bit you know it's probably in the order of hundreds it's not designed for like daily use it wouldn't be switching this uh, like a massive high voltage load at like you know 500 to 1000 volts at you know many amps off and on every day you'd probably need a even better solution than this one but um, obviously it's going to be uh, certified and rated to all sorts of uh, industry standards so yes you can actually safely switch your solar panels off under load with one of these things like in the peak middle of the day no problems you just don't want to do it like hundreds of times but you know doing it once or twice occasionally when you need to is fine and that's what these things are designed to do so we've just got some self tappers into plastic there oops it's fallen off already and that's our knot so that's just a top part there and this knob should come out that's what she said and there we go we just have a big stiff spring arrangement like that in there and yeah because these are very big clunky like they they really require a lot of force to actually uh turn these things so yeah so that's just how they do that in the top but we're really interested in the uh layered uh contacts and how they do the arc in prevention and stuff so this this will lift off here and that yeah so that's all just the top switch in mechanism like that and then the bottom one just has our uh, two self tapping screws there's a din rail uh, arrangement here so that's just a little clip for the din rail so we can take off our first level here so there we go that's interesting already just in this plastic part here even though there's no electrical contacts in this part they've got all little plasticky things shooting up and these walls separating in there i don't think they're just for uh, strength so these are probably designed to prevent like flashover from like one circuit to the other in here even like if it can get up here through the plastic even if it manages you know huge big plasma art comes up here through the plastic it's it's still got all these little traps in here i think I, I don't think that's for show. I think that's uh, that's part of the game. So it looks like we're going to have to slice through the label on the various levels there, and that's our first. That's our first one. There you go. Aha! Uh -huh. A similar sort of thing happening here. 
Wow. So there you have it. That's inside one layer or one switch contact uh, inside this thing. And you can see how it's all horizontally arranged. Now, I thought it would have gone out uh, from there to there, but it doesn't. It goes from this one over to that one. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, you have to know how these things are uh, wired up, in like in, designed internally. So, uh, yeah, I was wrong. I thought it would have gone straight over. But no, it goes diagonally opposite like that. And the different layers will have different arrangements. So how this works is obviously you've got uh, one contact here, one contact here, and hopefully you can see down in there, you can see that it's actually a dual wipe uh, contact there, and you basically just uh, swing this around like this. So at the moment it's off because uh, the metal is over here uh, and it's the path is completely broken. So you'd switch it around 90 degrees, clunk, and then those metal contacts just make, you know, they're just wiping contacts over here. And you've got to remember, these are not particularly high current. I mean, we're not talking hundreds of amps here, we're only talking like amps, really. Really, you know, sub 10 amp uh, kind of stuff, even though they're rated for like 25 amps, uh, really. But, you know, in practice, you're going to actually use them at less than that. The whole idea of these is for high voltage arc discharging. And you can see how this uh, arc extinguishing happens here. It's all in the physical design of the plastic around here. And you can see these are what's called arc shoots here, right? Because they're like little shoots shooting off like this. But you've also got arc barriers here as well like this and you'll notice that the top of this has this ring going all the way around it like that and that is to contain any plasma arcs right so that will go on top of here so the plasma really has nowhere else to go but sort of through this open gap here so when you switch this thing off okay the uh the arc wants to the high voltage it can arc over and it wants to maintain so it's going to you know, generate this high voltage uh plasma field sorry i'm not a physicist if i'm not explaining you know the plasma physics of it correctly um but yeah it basically has this open area it goes oh i can go through here and then it goes oh i can go down this path and this one and this one and this one and it just slowly dissipates out into the nether regions out here, right? So that's how uh, the plasma escapes like that and it's confined within that switch mechanism by that plastic around there. But yeah, these little arc shoots and that's how they get the high voltage isolation in, in combination with arc barriers, which uh, sort of like channel the flow of any potential plasma arcing. Cool, huh? So if we get that off and you can see the same thing is just going to be in, on different levels, but obviously like this one probably goes over to this one here and that one goes over there, etc. Uh, like that. So let me get that out. Because you have to remember that uh, DC switches are different to AC. You remember, like, AC actually switches its voltage every single uh, cycle. So you're naturally going to get, like, a s almost self-discharging type thing on switching uh, high-voltage AC uh, currents. But high-voltage DC, uh-uh, it's just, it's just one DC path, um, and it doesn't change value. So it wants to sort of, like, uh, continue the current current wants to continue and it'll find any gap. Anyway, there's one of the uh, copper shorting links there, so we can take that off. So this is just going to be multiple layers of the same thing. And that's how they, yeah, that's how they design them. There you go. And you can see inside here, once again, we've got an arc barrier like this, but just in case it like sneaks through the gaps, you, you remember, because there's no lip on these, right? So it can it can go through the gap in these. It depends on how, you know, the uh, pressure of the plastic between them. But technically, like, there's going to be, a you know, little uh, microns level gaps between here and the other when you make two plastic surfaces together because there's no, like, lip in there. Uh, I guess if you really designed even a higher voltage one again, you would put, you would, uh, like, mould in lips into here um, so that, like, they overlap. So, but anyway, these are just pressed together. So we've got an arc barrier here, but just in case it sneaks through the barrier uh, between the two pressed bits of plastic, we've got more arc shoots out here. So it just slowly dissipates those out. Cool, huh? Even though there's no electrical contacts in there, the plasma just uh, wants to go everywhere. The arcs just want to go everywhere. So yeah, it's designed to prevent that. And then you just open this out oh, like, oh, there we go. We've got some contacts. You just open this out like a book like this. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. 
Anyway, there's our copper, and there's our internal copper. There you go, we did want to see that uh, copper. So as I said, that's like a dual wipe uh, arrangement there. And you know, that, that's plenty for the uh, 25 amp uh, current capability in here. So these are just wipe contacts like that. And uh, you know, nothing fancy pantsy about that uh, at all. It's just, yeah, a dual wipe uh, arrangement like that. I don't know, you might be able to get like special uh, materials, but this looks like just plain old uh, copper in there. But uh, they do say something about uh, the materials in the uh, data sheet. They don't say what though. So I'm not sh sure what sort of, you know, alloy uh, that is. But anyway, yeah, um, there's nothing fancy there. It's all about <laughs> the arc paths and uh, these little arc chutes and arc barriers. Yeah, there you go. It's all just coming apart like that. Now this has, look at this. This has something in there. Did this get, is that, that like arc charring or something? Or is that some water ingress or some moisture ingress into there? I'm not sure what's going on there. And you can see some blackness on here as well. So I'm not sure what that is. Don't know if that's like a black permanent marker, some sort of factory thing, or whether or not that's actually had some um, charring or whatnot in it. Um, and it's just coated itself on the plastic. But yeah, that does not look normal. Yeah, that doesn't look pretty, does it? <laughs> so uh, this is not a failed DC isolator, um, but you know, it would have been used a couple of times. But uh, yeah, maybe that's the, uh, that's the end result of using these things. Um, something's gone wrong there. That could be some sort of like metal vaporization, uh, perhaps coming from the uh, contacts and then it coats itself on the uh, plastic. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look like it, but I don't know. I'm not a no material scientist. Now, of course, I'd love to show you uh, operational and try and get uh, like a demonstration of like the plasma arcing and the uh, like how the little shoots like sort of extinguish that. But I don't really have that sort of energy capability here in the uh, lab. Sure, I've got like five kilovolt uh, like high voltage uh, generators and stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's just not going to do the business because I know they, they only arc over small paths. So... It's it's not really going to happen, but I, I can give it a go. But yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to see anything. Okay, I've got my UniT uh, 5000 volt generator here. So let's generate 5000 volts on this sucker and see if we can get something to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if nothing happens at all because like the arc paths are quite large. Now I can't, uh, because this is not a high energy uh, generator, I can't like uh, short it out and then switch it back on. I can't do that. So I've got to only apply it when it's open. But here we go. Uh, 5,000 volts. And yep, zippity doo -da, as expected. But I can try and rotate it. And for those who want to know, it's measuring 770 gig ohms there. <laughs> gig ohms. Anyway, uh, yeah, okay. Let's see if I can get in here with the screwdriver. Move it. Does Are we going to do anything? Oh, yeah, we got some on the contacts, but... Whoop, yep, it just switched off. Hard to get my camera in there, but... Yeah, you can just see some arc in. Turn the lights down here, and we're not going to see any... The only thing we're going to really see is arc in between the contacts there, yeah. Yeah, you can just see that. Yeah, so nothing that exciting. Sorry, <laughs> I can't get the arc shoots working. I'll tell you what though, I wish this was smell-o-vision because uh, I, I can smell the ozone generated from the, uh, like the arc in there. So anyway, I hope you found that really interesting um, in that basically it's all about the physical design of these arc chutes and arc barriers and arc traps uh, to actually trap the arc in, which is like a, a high energy, like a, a plasma essentially. Um, and yeah, it just contains that and directs it and then extinguishes it because it's got these long paths that it has to go down. So it dissipates all the energy in the arcs and hopefully it contains it within the uh, switch. But as I said, yeah, um, a lot of these things have been uh, recalled over the years here in Australia. Let us know if you're aware of uh, recalls in other uh, countries. I don't I don't think this one is subject to the uh, recall, by the way. So this is one of the winner-winner chicken dinners. Um, so yeah, interesting, huh? 
So if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss down below and over on the EV blog forum. I think that's really cool. And don't forget to check out the evlog.store for all my merch. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.